Thank you for being here this evening. We are so glad to have you here as you are coming from all aspects of life, all places, all areas. We're going to talk about a topic today that maybe you have thought about, maybe you've researched, maybe you know a lot about. We're going to be dealing with Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to be looking at the fall of mankind. The first questions that it causes us to ask, and maybe you've asked these questions over time, maybe you're asking these questions this evening, is this. How did the world get in such a bad way? How did we get to this point in the world? How do things happen like they do? Why are things in such a manner as they are? You know, why are people the way they are? Other questions that you might be asking is, do my words and actions matter to others? Do what I do and what I say, do they affect other people around me? And how can I prepare for Jesus' return? Scripturally, it says in the book of Revelation, it's written that he will return one day. That he'll bring judgment on the unbelievers. That he'll draw those of us who believe into the clouds and we'll go home and be in heaven forever. So let's look at what the scripture passage here says and the interaction between serp the serpent and the woman, who we know later is to be called Eve. And, and we see their interaction here, and it, it begins to answer these questions. Verses 1 through 5 of chapter 3, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. For God knows in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The serpent, the serpent really took the words which, which were from God and twisted and mangled and, and jumbled them all up to where they resemble and, and what he said, humanly speaking, would have tempted Eve to say, this sounds good, why wouldn't he want me to have it? This sounds good, why shouldn't I have it? And that's where so many people get into such a predicament today, is that they hear words that resemble, scriptural words that resemble things that are, that are written, but... They really aren't direct quotes from God's Word, and they're really not based in factual information. They're meant to lead one astray, and, and this is exactly what's done here. This is exactly what happens here with Eve. Eve, Adam and Eve had an entire garden, had an entire place that they could be and live with such spiritual freedom, having all their needs met, being unaware of all that is bad going on out and outside of things, it, it, it's just it's hard to fathom. But the serpent being as crafty as he is, and, and picking apart the human understanding of things, we begin to answer the question of how did the world get in such a bad state? How did the world we know today get in such a manner as it is? Why are people the way they are? Do my actions matter? Do my words matter? We're about to see how that kind of plays out in all of this. So we see that the eyes are opened. Verse 6 and 7. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was the delight to her, to her eyes or to the eyes. And that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from it its fruit and ate. And she gave it also to her husband with her, and he ate. So she saw with her eyes. She saw that it was desirable. 
she delighted after it. And she wanted to be wise. She gave it to her husband. They both ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. In other words, they were, their minds were open to all kinds of things because of their disobedience to God. Ultimately, it was a, this is how I want you to live. God put it out there. But don't eat of this tree. We think of all the things the world says are permissible, but not beneficial. All things that, that people say is they contort and, and twist scripture for their own meaning. They don't read things in context. They don't see things as they are for the audience written. They pluck scriptures from here and there and say, well, this is what this means. Read the whole thing. See what it means in context. See what it truly means before you try to say this is what something means. And this is totally here where they want to know what God knows. Continuing this on, God comes, verse 8 through 12. Then they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man hid and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. See, it's important to know that there was a time of the day to which theologians have said they gathered together and, and had a time with God. They got to have that moment with God every day in his creation in his place that he spoke into existence they had that time of communion directly with God there was this time to which every day they got to speak to him it's it, it, it's so hard to understand but we we continue on then the Lord called to the man and said to him where are you and he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And here becomes the question in verse 11. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me from the tree, and I ate. So, <laughs> There goes deferring the blame. Who ate of the tree? They both did. So sin coming in through this action answers a lot of questions about why the world is in such a state as it is. So as God comes, as all of these things begun, begin to fall, fall apart, Adam and Eve have to face the music. They have to deal with the sin which they have now brought into humanity that the world has to face today that still is, is the predicament of all humankind, sin. We all know sin. We all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. This is where this became part of the human predicament. So what do they now have to contend with, Adam and Eve? Verses 13 and following, it, it, it says this. Verse 13 says, Then the Lord, said to, uh, the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you will go, and dust you will eat all the days of your life, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth, and pain you will bring forth children. Yet your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree which I have commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it, Cursed is the ground because of you, and toil you will eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you will eat plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread, till you return to the ground, because from it you are taken, 
for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Now the man called his wife's name Eve, because she was mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Then the Lord said, Lord God said, Behold, this man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might stretch out his hand and take for also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore God sent him out of the garden of Eden to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So he drove man out at the east of the garden of Eden. He stationed the cherubim and the flaming sword, which turned away, turned every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. This was what happened to humanity. There was, there was Adam and Eve who did not know sin, who lived in this environment, who were created by God. They were the first human beings to walk in this perfect place we know as Eden. They encountered the serpent there rather than abstaining from what they were being offered eve chose to say that it is pleasing from the eyes so the serpent even then evil was in the serpent took that and twisted all those things contorted all those things she believed that it was good that it was wise and she took of it and led adam to take of it they became aware that they were naked and the repercussions of that were far and wide and vast, and they were essentially kicked out of the Garden of Eden because of their sin, and humanity had paid the price throughout time, throughout time, throughout time. And so those ripple effects of us all being sinners and falling short of the glory of God still plague us to today. So how did the world become the way it was? They became the way they were, and the world became today the way it is because of sin. Unrepentant sin leads the world to accept and believe things, and maybe that's you, that you would never otherwise do being a child of God. There is a right and wrong, and God's Word mandates that. And when we live according to that word, we become more like him, also known as righteous and holy, for he is holy. Our focus doesn't begin to, to fall on feeding ourselves. We feed others. So the ripple effect of this sin and fall short of the glory of God also propels us who are believers to need to share the gospel message evangelism becomes something important in our lives. Evangelism means that the gospel is for, <coughs> excuse me, all people in all places at all times. There's a great need in the here and now. There's a great need in the here and now for us to help others' eyes be opened for the sake of the gospel. The glimmers of hope among the people that spreads faster than any measure of persecution, hope cannot be silenced. The reality behind this is every one of us, and maybe that's you here this evening, needs Jesus Christ in their life. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Not one of us is righteous as we ought to be. Not one of us is perfect as we ought to be. But in such an estate as we find ourselves in, Jesus came and died. We believe that Jesus was born into this world, that he was both divine and human. And as he lived, he showed us a greater way to live. He dined and, and met with people that that there's a lot of people that just wouldn't simply do. that. They're, they say, well, they're not worth the time because they're sinners. They're lowly. They're, they're, they're in such a bad estate. But, but it was very much those people and more that Jesus died for. See, Jesus died for the whosoever. The whosoever means me and you that might believe in him 
might obtain eternal life. Only through salvation, through Him. Only through repentance, which means a turning away from the way that we're living to follow His righteous and holy life. When we admit the things which we have done wrong, the sin, then He forgives us of that sin. When we believe that He died for our sins, we realize that the price has been paid. When we realize the price has been paid and He rose from that grave, we realize that eternal life is possible for us, that we can have hope in the here and now and hope for the life to come. So we also understand that Jesus will return one day. We know the Holy Spirit is with us. That's the presence of the Almighty with us that helps govern and guide us through life and helps give us the strength and the power of God in the here and now. But we understand the return of Jesus means that He will return and ascend the same way He left and He will be here among us. And it will be a time to which people will once again have to face the music. They'll have to face what they've done, what you've done, what I've done, will have to be faced by all mankind. At that point, everybody will see Jesus. So how will you be prepared for that to occur? If you don't know Jesus Christ, I invite you to do so today. How will you also Christian believers, how will you also prepare others for responding when Jesus comes again and asks, what have you done with the life you've been given? In my mind, I almost think that it will be like a, a highlight reel to which our life will be shown upon and he will say, what, would you, what have you done with the life I've given you? we understand that God created all of us, that we're all prone to sin, we all need Jesus, because there's not one of us that's righteous, not even one, that if we admit, believe, and confess, and all of that, then we are saved. But if we haven't done that, if we have rejected that, if we have said no to the many preachers and leaders that present the gospel truth, the actual truth, then we are standing condemned before an almighty God. But make no bones about it. All of us will stand before a righteous and loving God and have to give an account for the life we've led. And for those who are believers in Christ, there's, there's a time to which we will hear the words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. In other words, we'll get to or go to a place being heaven to which there's no more pain, no more sorrow for eternity. We'll get to be in the presence of the Almighty God. We'll get to sit and worship Him for the rest of our days. But adversely, for those who do not know Him as Lord and Savior or have rejected His gospel message or rejected Him being Messiah that can save us from all of our sins... If you are rejecting that, your permanent residence will be hell for eternity. That means that torment and sorrow and pain, eternity, that's your outcome. In other words, the lie that the world tells you that you have one life to live and that you better live it and do all that you can because one day you're going to die and you're going to occupy a space in the ground to everything deteriorates, and that's just you, is a big lie. And there's also all these other people with different views and theories out there about what happens. But the reality behind things is this. Jesus, at our most worst estate, died for us. And so the ending of this human predicament the fall of man, he sent a redeemer. So even, even though we were disobedient, even though we were prone to sin and still are, he sends Jesus to afford us forgiveness, repentance, and eternal life. 
Will you make that choice today? Will you come to the saving knowledge of Him? Heavenly Father, God, we come today. God, we thank You for the time we have with our friends, the time we have with those watching this. God, we know that our time is very short. Father God, Your message points out today in Genesis 3 that everything fell apart when sin was introduced. Humanity and humankind have always had to deal with ailments and setbacks and choices and decisions and things which led people away from you or to you. Father God, I pray if there's someone that needs to know you as Lord and Savior, that needs to understand their worth beyond measure, that today they're willing to call on you for forgiveness, for repentance, for hope beyond all hope, that the world doesn't have to be just a grouping of our decisions that we're condemned to, that the way to life is through Jesus Christ who died for our sins and rose from the grave. Father God, we all come to a point in our lives where we're going to have to give an account for what we believe and who we trusted in. Dear God, if we, if we trusted in you, then it's going to be a well done, that good and faithful servant. Heaven is our destination. But if we have rejected you, you stand before us and you say, depart from me, for I never knew you. Father God, I pray today, if someone is contemplating that choice, God, I pray that they repent before it's too late. Father God, I pray for the Christian believer who's watching. God, I pray that, that they are more apt to share the gospel message, that there's an intensity in their life to which they are pursuing a passion that they are pursuing. And that passion is being open about the gospel, evangelism, telling the truth and love in a world that is so anti-God right now. Heavenly Father, the reason we're in such a state as we are is because of sin. And sin's answer is Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray that we tell people before it's everlasting too late. Father God, your word says that you will return. Jesus will return one day. And that will be the end of all things. Father God, I just I pray that, that we live with such reckless abandonment for your gospel message. Not caring who we might offend in the sense of telling them about you, but also loving them enough to tell them the truth. Father God, I, I pray in all things you continue to work in and through us for your glory, for your name's sake. Amen. Thanks for being here. And I hope that if you like this message, that you will share it with someone else today. And when we're back together, I hope that you'll gather with us here at Friendship Baptist Church. We would love to, for you to be a part of our family of God as we serve in this community and beyond for his name's sake. For here we believe that we exist to, to love God, to love others. And, to, and as we do all of those things, then we go out to reach the entire world for his gospel's sake. All of those things and more. Looking at our website, there's an offering there for you, friendshipsturgis.com slash family. And as you look at it, you begin to see some announcements of things coming up, the Bible and how you can engage calendar and things like that, an online directory. But, but you're able to also see small groups and how you might connect with them. Online. As well as Sunday school. For kids. And lastly... Maybe you're feeling a little separated from church and not able to give as you're normally used to. You can give online at this Friendship Sturgis family page, but also you can give by mailing in at 5491 Craig Springs Road, Sturgis. And so either way you want to do that, we encourage you to do that during a time of need so that we continue to be able to do all of these things that you are enjoying now.